this and post it in the um, <clears throat> online meetings link in Blackboard. So this was the first one. This was uh, sketch two uh, two point three number one. And um, as I was reminding you guys the other day, let me get a, a pointer work in here. Just a second. Get a highlighter. Change it to green. All right. Right down here in this corner, in your lower left corner, where you have that little box, the corner of the box that you have there. Uh, if this were an AutoCAD drawing, we actually have an icon down there. It's called the UCS icon, stands for User Coordinate System. And it has an arrow on it, and it has X in this direction, and it has an arrow like this. And it says Y. And so, as I said, this is called the UCS, a User Coordinate System in AutoCAD. And uh, we'll be starting AutoCAD next week, so you'll need to <clears throat> make sure that you have AutoCAD installed and ready to go by next Tuesday. So, uh, if this were where your UCS is located in AutoCAD, then we would say that the, co the coordinate for that point right there would be 0, 0. That's how AutoCAD would see that, which means that the value of that point right there is zero on the X and it's zero on the Y. So it hasn't gone anywhere on the X and it hasn't gone anywhere on the Y. And if we measured from that corner and we came over three units on the X and then we measure from that corner and we went up three units on the Y, our center point right here we would say is at a coordinate of three comma three. And that three comma three is relative. So relative meaning it's measured from, in this case, relative to zero, zero. Now, of course, in making these sketches, that's not too important. But next week, it's going to be very important when we start thinking more like this. <clears throat> so I, I showed you guys the other day, I think if I were going to make this drawing, I would actually start one of these circles at 3 comma 3 and then I would give it a diameter and in this case the diameter of that circle would be 2 and then I would draw another circle and I would snap to the center point of the first circle and I would draw that one with a diameter of 4 and I'd draw a third circle that would be a diameter of 6 All right, so <clears throat> that just a preface for the way we'll start thinking about things starting next week. So this is not a very tough project to sketch. Uh, once you get your circles drawn, of course, you're just going to be projecting from the quadrants to locate where things are. And, uh, you know, same quadrant here projects up to there. And though this is one where you can kind of take advantage of if you have your miter line in there, uh, once you draw the right side view or the top view, of course, you can project across and, and down to find where your back edge is. But <clears throat> once you've identified where, say, this edge is, you can project up and across. And once you've identified where your front edge is, of course, it's going to be over to the miter line and then drop straight down to locate that. And so those are the principles of orthographic projection that we apply to our multi-view drawings here. Does anybody have a question? You can unmute yourself or let's see, I don't see anything in chat. So this one, I figured you everybody did okay. And plus you do have the solutions and hopefully you're checking the solutions. This one is very similar to the one before, except we have that, this part of our cylinder has been removed. And so that gives us two planes over here that we see in the side view. And because our line of sight <clears throat> to those planes would be perpendicular to those planes, we could say that we are normal to those planes, or we might say that we're orthogonal to those planes. All right. Now, in the front view, though, you have kind of a blending of two line types. You have a visible line, which is right here, and a visible line which is right here and then you have center lines you're going to have these vertical and horizontal center lines coming in right there and um, the best practice would be where this center line is going 
up right there that there would be a little gap between that center line and this and the beginning of this visible line and the same thing right down here but this is so small in the sketch it's kind of hard to show that but if we were doing this in AutoCAD we would try to show that now remember that your center line should stick out a quarter inch past the edge of the object all right and so if we're looking at a grid like this and we're just thinking that that grid may be equal to one inch then a quarter inch doesn't stick out very far. So it's all kind of relative to how far you want to stick things out there. And uh, we can see it sticking out a little bit farther over here and definitely sticking out farther over here. You know, I think you ought to be consistent with the lengths that you, that you run those uh, center lines out. This one is the first one that has something that's sort of tricky and where it's tricky is in the right side view. And so this line right here needs to be on that grid right there when it projects across. So it represents the top edge of that arc when we see it in the side view. Okay, so we have this barrel shape, this half barrel thing going on. But then we have these slots. And those slots remove some of the mass of this part. And so if we follow this arc around until it intersects with that vertical line, if we go right to that intersection right there, we'll see that intersection's a little bit below the grid line. So we want to project across. And so this line right here represents that edge there. And then, of course, this one back here represents that edge there. And they're just a little bit below the grid line. So I want you to make sure that you uh, pay attention to that. It's a, it's a detail that's important. It's because that's the correct way to project that geometry. And so if you handed a drawing into me in CAD and you didn't have that notched out, you had it going straight across like that, uh, that would be a minus five type mistake, which is a fairly big mistake because you're, you know, your grade starting at 100 and now you've dropped down to a 95. <clears throat> so we want to make sure we get the geometry right. And the other thing we want to watch out for here is that the hidden lines come in and then they go straight up because we have a vertical plane right here. And then we have that vertical plane on this side and they go across so that this is open. There's no hidden line in that gap right there. Now this one we have the stadium. And so uh, this, this shape that we have right here, we call a stadium. So we would want to have our center mark and then we'll have our center lines coming out. The gaps are not showing very well in my sketch right here, but there should be four gaps around each of those center marks. Remember the center mark is the little plus sign. And then there should be a visible gap that comes out all the way around. And uh, I also mark those on drawings when I'm grading drawings. If you, if you don't have a gap, I generally mark those as a minus one type mistake because I want to draw your attention to it. So we do need to have our center lines up here. For some reason, mine are not showing very clearly as center lines. So whenever you draw a center line, you want a straight line that's fairly long, short gap with a, a short dash, and then a short gap, and then come down like that. That's what these guys ought to be looking like right here. Same way for this center line, <clears throat> pardon me, that we have right there. And then we have one center line over here on this side. So now we have two of those stadiums put together and we want to follow the same rules. So we're going to have uh, center lines going through for uh, representing the center axis of, of these half, half barrel shapes, if you want to call them that, those half rounds. And the um, thing we want to pay attention to here is that the center marks are the center for this arc and this arc here. So we would say that those are uh, concentric and they have a common center. And so we want to indicate that by extending our center lines out first past this arc, but then extending it out past the second arc. And we want to do that up here, and we're going to do that on the opposite side over here as well. It'd be the correct way to draw that. So this is our first architectural shape. 
And uh, this thing right here in architecture, we call that a dormer, D-O-R-M-E-R. -E and of course, this is not really uh, a house, but you know, it could be. Um, usually when you have a dormer, you're gonna have a window in there or something like that. And because we couldn't see if there was a dormer on the opposite side over here, um, you know, I think if you could see it, you would be seeing part of that plane over here. So I only drew one on one side. If you drew it on the opposite side because you couldn't see over there, I would be okay with that. So you would add that up here. So um, we have this plane right here. And um, I have a question for you. Is that an oblique plane or is that an incline plane? So the answer, and the way you know how to answer that is this. If it's an inclined plane, it will appear as an edge view in one of the normal views. And the normal views are front, top, right, left, back, and bottom. And right over here, that plane right there appears as an edge view. So that means this guy is inclined. Okay, it's not oblique. Now we're going to have some oblique planes later, but not in this one. So of course we have our, our hidden lines for the sides of this slot that runs through. And we have our hidden lines over here. Now this is a, a place where when you're doing architectural drawings, a lot of times when you're drawing an elevation, <clears throat> it's hard to determine how tall an inclined plane is like on a roof when you're looking at the side view of it like that. So you almost have to come in and draw your, your view where you see the edges of the planes and then project over and project the height of, of your view into the side view over there or the side. In the case of architecture, we call it a side elevation. So this would be a front elevation, a right elevation. And this is sort of a roof plan up here. Another thing that uh, they will do in architecture is if this side of the house, let's say that's the front of your house, if it faces south, that would be labeled maybe as the south elevation. You know, and so rather than going through and calling it front, side, and all that, they will go ahead and give the directional elevation instead of the front, top, or side. All right, so here we have another roof shape. And um, again, probably a good idea to project that height across once you get one of these, you know, you could go in either direction once you figured out what the, uh, what the height is and what the slope is. When we talk about slope on a roof, we're talking about the angle. And the way we represent slope on a roof is like this. We draw a symbol that looks like that along the side. Let me draw it over here on this side. All right, and then what we, we do is we say for every 12 inches that this roof runs horizontally, so we put a 12 right here, for every 12 inches that it runs horizontally, it's rising, let's say it's rising 10 inches. Okay, so that's how you note slope on a roof. And so when we get to the capstone project near the end of the, of the class, we'll be doing we'll be putting on these symbols on the sides of our roof plans. All right, so we have a slot going all the way through, just like on the first one, but it's intersected by another slot. So of course, no hidden lines inside there. And we project up here, and so the hidden lines are coming across and ending when they hit that slot and coming across here same way on the top. So hopefully you were able to visualize all that. Uh, here's our barn. And we have a hayloft, which is actually just a square cutout that's running all the way through. And so you would expect that there would be a hidden line right here, but that is in line with this crease. So we get a, a solid visible line coming across right here. It has precedence over that. And so we show the bottom of the square cutout. And then up here, <coughs> pardon me, the cutouts do not intersect, so uh, we have our hidden lines just crossing each other like that. Here's our shed roof. So uh, front view, we have this cutout 
that looks like a, a barrel shape cut out. So we're projecting across from there. And because this is a half round, it has a center axis that runs through the middle right here. So what we're seeing here and here are, is a center line representing the center axis of this half round barrel we have right here. And then here's our cutout for the window, if you want to think of it like that. And window comes up and intersects through that arch, arch and breaks right there. Now, uh, let me check chat, see if anybody had any question. <clears throat> so now we're on to the uh, sheet uh, 2-4. This is probably the hardest one. So I wanted to see how you guys did on this. And to help you visualize it, I created a 3D model and I cut it in half. And so because what that what that helps you do, if you slice this thing in half, you can get a better idea for what may be hidden, you know, by looking at it like that and what may lie off that plane. And so when you look over here in your right side view, the hidden lines you see here and here represent these hidden lines there. Of course, these are visible lines up here on the top. And then you see this hidden line, which is that edge, and this hidden line coming across there. And you mirror that so it's exactly the same in the bottom half. And then this plane right here is one contiguous plane running all the way across. And so that's what you're seeing right there. And of course, we have our, our hole. All right. So in the top view, we're going to see hidden lines running north and south all the way through. And then the hidden lines for the hole. And then in the front view, we have hidden lines for the square cutout that run all the way through as well over here. So um, a lot of times students seem to struggle with this one until they see this view right here. That kind of helps you visualize things. Remember that uh, in the real world, you're going to be doing all this in your imagination. So because none of these parts will will exist yet, so you won't have a 3D model of the part to help you with the solution, but you'll get better at visualizing everything. The next one is uh, number two on there. This one is kind of uh, kind of tricky, and I'll tell you why. In your front view, you have an inclined plane right here. All right. And then you have a hole that goes through from that inclined plane. And you could draw that hole two ways. You could draw the hole where the hidden lines are perpendicular to the inclined plane. And so then this would actually be a center line running through at that angle right there. <clears throat> so we would say that that hole is normal to this plane if you draw it that way. Now, it's also possible to draw it like it is here because when we just look at this sketch it's hard to tell what if that hole were just drilled vertically and it was not drilled uh, perpendicular to the inclined plane then that would put your hidden lines coming straight down from the sides of the hole so since you can't tell I don't care if you draw it where the hole is vertical or you draw the hole normal to the plane but however you draw it, you need to make sure that your hidden lines and everything, uh, you know, work with that view. And so if you drew this hole normal to the plane, if you project from where that hidden line intersects right there and you projected it straight up to the top view, you would actually see that you have hidden lines back here, which represent the back edge of that hole. And the front edge of that hole you could actually see because you would be seeing through the hole, so you would have a visible line coming around right in there. All right. So it's a little more complicated when you draw it where that hole is normal to the inclined plane. In the side view over here, where the hole intersects the inclined plane, you would project across, and that would give you the bottom, and you would project across from that intersection right there across to get the top and so this is an elliptical shape the width of the ellipse though should be the full diameter of that hole in this view over here and it should be the full diameter of the hole 
up here as well. And so uh, you could also project over to a miter line and, and locate you know, the edges of the holes on this if you wanted to. All right, so um, I don't know which way you guys went with that, whether you drew the hole vertically or whether you drew it normal to a plane, but you wanna reconcile those hidden lines uh, to whatever way you decided that that hole went through right there. The other thing about, I guess, if you draw the whole normal, I'm, I'm sorry, if you draw the whole vertical, then of course in your top view, you're just looking straight down through the bore of the hole, so you're not seeing any hidden lines at all. The elliptical shape and the side view will look the same in either view, pretty much. This guy's pretty simple. Um, one thing about it is we have a center line over here that could represent just the center axis of that cut out right there. And then in the background, we have another center line running all the way through, and then they, they sort of overlap right down in here. But other than that, it's pretty simple. So this guy, we have an inclined plane and uh, pretty easy to figure out. You know, got an edge view of a plane, then it's probably going to be inclined. But we do have to deal with, with this plane right here, which we project across, which gives us a hidden line all the way across. But the uh, stadium cutout, which looks like a slot in the top view, it's going to go all the way through. The hidden lines go all the way through. But because it also, uh, at this point right here and on the opposite side, are the centers of this and this, we need to make sure that these center lines extend out beyond the corners of this larger fillet right here. And so what would the radius of that fillet be right there? Okay, so the radius would be, imagine that you have an arrow here that swings left and right and swings around that. That would be the radius for this arc right here. And if you count your grids, you see that the radius is two. So I could, I could extend that radius at, or that leader out and I might write R 2.0 on there for a radius of two. Because I have one on this side, I might even add to that note, and I might write 2x r 2.0. Now I would never write 2x on top of my view, but you know I'm just showing you how we might notate that later when we start adding dimensions to things. So the radius of this guy right here, that would be one. So if we were pointing at that, we would say r 1.0. And we actually have two of those too, so we could put a 2x on that. So two times r1.0. This guy's not very, doesn't, does not have hardly any tricky things in it. It's pretty easy. I mean, you just wanna make sure you get that hidden line right there showing the rest of that arc <clears throat> because it goes behind this square corner over here and you want to make sure you're extending your center lines all the way out because it's the center of that but here you only need to extend it down a quarter inch <clears throat> pardon me past the edge of that of that hole this guy is pretty simple too uh, not a lot of tricky stuff in here the holes go all the way through we do have an inclined plane on the back edge but they don't affect our hole, the way we're showing the holes. If you ever wanted to know how to draw a mushroom, front, top, side view, this will give you an idea. So front view, again, we're gonna be measuring from a zero, zero origin point over three and up three. So we're starting at three comma three. But you know, this is a spherical radius right here. Okay, so it's not, not just your normal radius, it's, it's you know, spherical shape or ball shaped. And uh, so one of the ways we might notate that is, looks like that's a three. So we might put a, like a SR 
3.0 or something like that. You know, we can we can uh, abbreviate some of that stuff. All right, and we see it over here on the opposite side. So we have um, something that looks a little like the prototype for the Batmobile, and uh, maybe it's the logo that goes on there, but. This one does have a couple of tricky things in it. <clears throat> Pardon me. It has an arc right here in the top view. So it needs a center line in one grid and up one grid. But what also happens here, it has a vertical plane. And so when we project that down, we should see an edge right there. So that edge, of course, represents this area right in here that we're seeing as an edge view. And um, we also would project that over to our miter line and project a line down from there. So we're going to have to have this edge right here. And the other thing we want to do, because we have a center line right here, we want to project down a center axis in that view. And then, of course, over here is the hole. And over here are the edges of this hole and the center line for it but the edges of the hole will be there but the center line is in line with this visible line so it won't show okay and over here though we have this extra center line and what that is is this center axis right here which is three-dimensional it's running down and away from us uh, projects over and down right there And this is our final one. And this one, uh, the tricky part or the thing you want to pay attention to is in here we have a visible line and we have a visible line. And then we have a center line that is in line with that, collinear. But what we should have is a, a small gap right there and a small gap right there. So we're not going to run our center line into our visible line. We also should have a small gap there and a small gap on that side if we're going to extend our center line out. And uh, remember that when we print these, if we were doing this in AutoCAD, that these visible lines are going to be printed six, I'm sorry, 0.6 millimeters thick. Uh, we may even print them a little bit thinner than that, but you know that's the, the standard would say to print a visible line, 0.6 millimeters but then come in and print your center lines and your hidden lines, like this line right here. We're going to print those 0.3 millimeters. And so when we do that, we're referring to the relative line weight. That's what we call it, even though it's actually line thickness. But uh, the correct term is line weight. All right. So I don't, let's see. See so anything when we have the circle in the middle of the line it always goes beyond the outside. Uh, well, the you have a full uh, you know round shape right here, and so normal normally it would be uh, some you know okay to put those lines out like that. Even though you have a visible line right here, that's what kind of messes with that. If this visible line was were not here, you would definitely have a center line running all the way out to right there. So you want to have a gap in there. So I hope that answered your question. All right. So with that, I want to talk about the next assignment. So we have one more sketching assignment, and that will be what you'll be working on over the weekend. And following that assignment, we start doing everything using AutoCAD. And uh, so the assignment is exercise 2.0. Five, which is on page 79 of your text. You'll see these, these objects on page 79. And you want to draw the nine objects front, top, and side view. And <clears throat> you're going to notice that these are more complicated. And the, the last two sheets, we kind of ramp things up a little bit. There'll be more for you to, to deal with. But, but really, you're just going to put it all together one feature at a time. It's not going to be too bad but watch out for little tricky things. And so there's plenty of them in here. This guy right here, you see that plane right there and on the opposite side? 
that one's definitely an oblique plane. It's not inclined, so it's a little more complicated. And when you sketch that, you're going to want to uh, locate where the points are, where those planes begin, and then connect the dots or connect the points together to create those. Right? Over here, you should assume that this hole goes all the way through because that will affect this plane back here on the back side. This is hollow, so you'll have to deal with that. And then this guy's a little tricky over here. I'll just warn you about that one. So page 79, and I'm going to skip through these guys real fast. And then on page 81, there are nine more. And uh, this is the end of our sketching are going to be these guys, and these have some really nice tricky ones in there. So uh, these will be a challenge for you to see if you can figure them out. And the way you will uh, you will approach these is you'll go to Blackboard and you'll click on module number two. And uh, I think I'll just go ahead and escape out of this thing here if I can. And go ahead and bring up Blackboard. Let's see, may have to move it a little bit. All right, so what you'll want to do is come over here and click on Chapter 2 Curriculum, and then scroll down, and you're going to come right down to the, uh-oh, I've got it. I've got this set up to where it is showing the view that you guys have, and I need to turn on this, this exercise right here. It's exercise 2.5 through 2.6. Make that available. So when you log into chapter two, you can see I, I'm seeing everything. When I put it on what, I'm gonna put it on the setting that shows what you guys see. You're only seeing now chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. You're gonna click on chapter two and come down here and click on this assignment folder right there. And when that opens, uh, you have a grid sheet that you can tear out of the back of your book, or you can print one from this one right here. I'm sorry. And then in step two, we have a video showing uh, the 3D models for everything in 2.5 and another video, video showing the 3D models for everything in 2.6. And if you haven't used those videos yet, these are the ones that where I made a three-dimensional inventor model and I show you the front and then I rotate it to the top. I rotate it back to the front and rotate, rotate it to the right just to help you visualize what these things look like. And on these, it may you may really need those because like I said, these are more difficult. The last two are more difficult. Uh, when you finish the first one, you can come down here and pick on the solutions for 2.5. And when you finish the second one, you can pick on the solutions. And so you can look at the solutions before you come to class next week. So on Tuesday of next week, I'm going to go through the uh, solutions for these guys and talk about a couple of things. And then we're going to get started with AutoCAD. So you're going to definitely want to have AutoCAD up and running by next Tuesday. All right. And so uh, if you're having trouble getting AutoCAD working, there's a couple of resources. One is the first one is to go to download the software and look at that. And the second one, if you're having trouble getting it installed, uh, it, you can click right here on get tech support and you can submit a, uh, a uh, problem ticket. And our tech support guys, uh, who are a lot of them are working online, some of them are actually on campus, they will get back to you and try to help you get, get AutoCAD set up and working. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out now, because we're going to start working with CAD files, is managing your home computer files. And so if you click on that, there is a PDF here on how to, how to set up your home folder. And this was written by our tech support group. And what they recommend is that you install Google, Fi Google Drive file stream, if you haven't already. <clears throat> and uh, that will allow you to save your files out there on the cloud. and will also allow our tech support team to back up your files at the end of the semester. 
So it gives you kind of a step-by-step -step on how to do this. And uh, the other day, for some reason, my computer lost its connection to Google File Stream. And so I clicked on this and just followed the directions and, and got it set back up. Now, once you get your home folder set up on Google File Stream, and like I said, that's going to be on the cloud, you want to create a home folder and it's going to lead you through. So you're going to have a drive called My Drive right there. And on My Drive, you can create a new folder. And uh, usually the way we name folders is we take your student ID number, dash, and then your name. So if we were working over there at Northridge campus or at Highland campus uh, on our server, you would have a folder on the server that has your, like I said, your student number and your name. And at the end of the semester, we would archive that folder for you. And so later, if you wanted, if you needed to pull these files, even if your computer broke or something, we should be able to, uh, to get your files back for you. And then what I recommend doing is that once you make that, uh, this folder here with your name on it, that would be your home folder, that then you make another folder inside there named DFTG1405 for this class. And then I would open the DFTG1405 folder and I would make two additional folders. And one of the folders would be named Daily Work and I would save all of the CAD projects daily work files there and I would make another folder named capstone and when we get to the capstone project at the end of the semester I would save everything for the capstone in there but don't worry we'll talk about this some more as we go through and you can always ask me and this could be another thing where we could do a one-on-one -on -one Google meet and you could project your screen and I could kind of walk you through some of this stuff or you could even do that with our tech support guys. If you're having trouble, you can project your screen and, and they can look at that and help you. Okay, so that is a little bit about getting things set up for next week with AutoCAD. So I'm gonna go back over here. So as I said, the assignment is to uh, do the last two sketching problems. That's 2.5 and 2.6 in your book. They're on 79 and 81. And the other thing I want you to do is go over here to uh, chapter three and click on chapter three. And there's a PDF right here. And I would like for you guys, if you can find the time to look at that PDF and it's on traditional drafting tools and techniques. And so because we're doing this class online, we're not gonna do any traditional drafting, but uh, you have a good chapter in your book, chapter three, that talks about traditional drafting techniques. I think if you click on this, the image is a little bit larger than what you have in the book. So I would kind of recommend doing this. And I added some more information uh, to this on reading the scales. And so uh, the scales are, you know, let me see, I usually have one nearby. Doesn't look like I have one. Hang on just a second, let me grab one. So I know I'm probably small on your screen, but uh, this is an example of one of the technical scales that, that drafters and engineers and designers use and architects too. So uh, that's what we're talking about. There's, there's some good information on reading the scales in this chapter three PDF. So between now and next Tuesday, I hope you can watch that along with the sketching assignment. And what I would also recommend is that you watch this video right here. Uh, it's called Write Like a Designer. And it's a short, fairly short video. You can put it on it. When you click on this, the video is going to actually open uh, in uh, YouTube. And in YouTube, you can set up the speed. So you, you can, we can watch it at a faster speed. I don't want to tie you up too long with this. But uh, in that video, I kind of show you the way that designers, how they write, and we call that lettering. And so I'd like for you to watch that. So even though we're not doing traditional drafting, uh, I think it's important that you develop a, a way of writing that looks like a designer's way of writing. So I'm going to at least show you how that works uh, on that video. So the assignments then are 2.5 and 2.6 are the sketching assignments. I would like you to read the PDF in chapter three that's in step two. 
And then I would like you to watch this video called Write Like a Designer. And the final thing would be to uh, get AutoCAD 2021 loaded on your computer and have it running, okay? So that would be your, your activity between now and next Tuesday. So you have about four days, I guess, to do that in. So we have a holiday on Monday, which doesn't affect us, but it's affecting my Monday class. And I'm trying to keep both classes at the same place. So my Monday class actually even got more to do over the weekend so that they can stay up with where you guys are going to be. So with that, I'm going to see if anybody has a question, if you want to unmute and ask me a question, or if you want to send me chat. Otherwise, if you want to leave, you can, and I'll stay on here until 1240. So I'll be on here for another hour. And if you have any questions, you can log in and ask me or just stick around and, and ask me afterward. Otherwise, have a great weekend and uh, be safe. Have a great holiday on Labor Day. And I will talk with you next Tuesday at 11 o'clock. go back to that one let's see right here okay um, what did I do it up here or wh which one did I do it on I wrote WCL Oh, um, well, I said that that is an inclined plane. Maybe I just wrote, I, I think it probably just my, my lettering looked bad. Uh, I may have wrote INCL for incline. I -N is, yeah, I think it probably just my lettering was bad. How'd you do on these? Okay.